Hello and welcome to this Webflow live stream. My name is Aaron Kornblatt and I'm so excited to be back. Well, last week I was here, but it was recorded. So I hope you enjoyed that stream with Sergi talking about the new uh, layout in the style panel. But to today's stream, we're talking about custom CSS properties in values with none other than Corey Moen, who I'm gonna bring on in a few moments. But first, we have so many folks in the chat. So if you haven't joined our streams before, make sure to create a YouTube account and go ahead and drop us in the chat at any moment. You can ask us a questions, uh, you can say hi. So we've got uh, uh, Nick Jones, who doesn't yet have a CSS property favorite, but I'm sure you'll have one by the end of today. X Adam, welcome. Uh, good to see you in the YouTube chat uh, from Twitter. See you there all the time. So welcome, welcome. Uh, we've got Glenn, welcome Glenn, uh, John, so many folks in the chat. So really appreciate all of you joining today. So make sure uh, to fill out the form at the top of the chat if you want your name in today's credits. But yeah, really excited. Uh, hopefully, Balaji will be able to teach you something new. I'm sure I'm gonna learn a lot. So yeah, about I think uh, a month ago, maybe a little more, we released the ability to add custom CSS properties in val and values in Webflow, giving you kind of the ability to add any powers of CSS. And you know, I don't know every 200 plus property that's possible, but I brought someone on who I think knows quite a bit and is gonna share some of his favorites. So without further ado, say hello and drop some love in the chat for Corey Moen. Corey, welcome to the live stream. What's up, y'all? So excited to be here, honored. Uh, I definitely don't know all 200, uh, but I definitely would say I'm a CSS fan uh, and purist in many rights. So, you know, stoked to be here and even more stoked for this feature to finally be here. Absolutely. So I think when we launched this, uh, secretly a few people DM me and said, you need to have Corey on. And uh, <laughs> so appreciate you saying hello. But for folks who don't know you, maybe a brief introduction. And then there are some folks who don't know what CSS properties are. So we're going to talk about that. But yeah, Corey, give us, give us a 30 seconds on you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Corey Moen, I'm here in little Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, I am by day a brand designer on the web team at Webflow. So we build and maintain all of webflow.com in Webflow, very meta. Uh, and then by Eve and passion projects, I've also worked on things like mass framework for Webflow, uh, freelance, those kinds of things. And again, I just am a big fan of the product uh, and all of the power it enables. Um, and oh, again, custom properties. Here we go. We're on to the, the powertrain now with things like this custom DOM element that came earlier in the year. Um, and yeah, even just diving into what custom properties is, um, I think I would back up a little bit and remind mm -hmm. the audience, uh, especially if you're just learning what Webflow is for the first time. Webflow, a big differentiator of it is that it is embracing and leveraging the power of native code languages in the browser, which is HTML and CSS. So you're using the same properties, terms, functions, capabilities that developers are building anything from apple.com to a local coffee shop site, but visually in Webflow, right? And so to date and before custom properties, we had access to a lot of different properties natively in Webflow. And now custom properties allows us to have the whole almost the entire rest of them possible within CSS as a coding language directly in the designer. So no longer do you need to stash them in a custom code embed or somewhere else. Uh, it will allow you to add them to individual classes and selectors directly um, in the style panel and then has a lot of other functionality we'll show to make sure that you do it efficiently, learn along the way, um, and even in a way that's safe. So it, it error checks and things like that for you to make sure that it's all good to go right out of the box. So we're really opening up the whole other gamut of power that comes with CSS and anything also that comes in the future um, much more easily and accessibly in Webflow. Absolutely. So that's what we mean by full power of CSS. There's some questions in the chat around what do we mean by CSS property? So essentially just styling. All the styling you see in Webflow is a CSS property. There are those that are natively supported in that style panel, but now we're opening it up to everything else. Now, Corey, uh, I gave you the challenge of covering 200 in an hour. You said no. So we're going to try. <laughs> uh, what I propose here is I'm going to bring up a website, right? And we're just going to talk about what are some options, right? Our goal here today is to teach everyone to fish. 
to learn about how to figure out which custom properties make sense. So Cordy, mm -hmm. how does that sound? How about I share you a quick website and we'll start building? Yo, let's do it. All right. So this is my website. And when I say my website, I mean one that Skylar uh, built for us uh, actually during Webflow.com. <laughs> so <laughs> shout out to Skylar, as always, building beautiful websites. So uh, this is my website, Corey. Walk me through, what, do you, what are some options here in terms of custom properties? Uh, uh, yeah, what, what do you see right off the bat that we could kind of improve using custom properties? Yeah, totally. So I, I think any website, one challenge that always comes in is, you know, the point of a website is text, content, tell somebody about who you are, what you are, what you're selling, uh, and, and managing text in an elegant way can be tough, right? And so whether it's headings, paragraph, et cetera, I mean, one thing that stands out is that, that subtitle there, right? So it, it's not bad. It flows nicely. But uh, I know a, a hot prop <laughs> that has gone around in the community is uh, one that's called text wrap. Uh, and specifically, it will allow us to uh, set a property on a class or an element and have CSS do the magic of automatically having that text flow in a balanced and even way. Uh, and yeah, so maybe let's try that one on, the, on this little element here. Okay, so when you say custom prop, what you mean is that it's not something we can use in this layout right here, right? So it right. is a custom CSS property, custom in the sense that it, you know, I can't click anything to get to it. Mm -hmm. So I have to go down to custom properties. I'm gonna go ahead and add. Now, how do I know, like, do you, like should, I just, should I just call you every time? I'm like, I need to do this, Corey. What, how do I do it? Yes, I'm all DMs are always open, but no, <laughs> I think some of the magic here is that first of all, you can see there's a, the list of 200 plus right there that you could scroll through if you really wanted to. However, I think the other big part of this is is learn and, and you start to get a hang of the things that are that are helpful properties like this that are new. Um, and so, you know, this would probably be one you maybe see in a forum, a social post, whatever. And so you can actually just start typing. You can type okay. text dash wrap. Um, and it will narrow down those results. You can see there it is right there. And so you can select it, do the shortcut either way. And then, so that is the prop end of it. And then now it goes right into what is the value you want to right. enter. And so it won't give you the suggestions of all values because there can be a lot sometimes. But in this case, we know that the one we want to consider is called balance. Okay, let me zoom um, so out you, so we can see. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying mm -hmm. balance. Yep. And then, yep, click off or hit enter, and then boom, instantly you can see the text visually balances itself. And this is part of the magic too, is that like what was just entered there is again, quite literally just a CSS prop as you would code it in, but you don't have the environment of like saving and waiting for it to live refresh and all that. Instantly you can see this happen in the canvas. Um, so it does feel rather magical. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so we've now applied the property text wrap balance to this one. So let me go into preview. Now, you know, there's some folks who might have missed that, right? Or, you know, we got Penny who came a little late. So how do we, hello, Penny, by the way, good to see you. Uh, how, how can I, in the preview, kind of go before and after? Like, is there a way that I can say like, oh, well, what did it look like before? What is it looking with this custom property? Yeah, I mean, I think one way that is a huge way I learned a lot about code was browser inspectors, right? So you mm -hmm. can like right click on uh, the element and then inspect. And then you can actually see here's the underlying code being produced, right? Um, and then you can go find right there text wrap at the bottom of the hero right. paragraph uh, selector, then yeah, so you could actually go in and like change balance, for example, or turn it on and off to see the difference. And again, I think this is part of the magic is that like, the parallel between the actual code the browser is rendering and what's in Webflow being one-to-one -one, um, and being able to yeah play around and adjust it like this. So what we did there, we inspect it. And then if I'm understanding correctly, we have the HTML, right? So I have my class hero. This is, you know, a div, uh, which mm -hmm. is called hero paragraph. So when I hover mm -hmm. over, that's, you know, what we're looking at. And then this, the layout might be different for folks who are doing this at home. You go into styles. I'm on, uh, uh, Google Chrome here. And mm -hmm. then it's saying, okay, here are the CSS properties. These ones, we kind of mm -hmm. used the Webflow UI to implement. And this mm -hmm. one is a custom prop. From the browser's perspective, it's all code, right? Yep. And if we turn it on and off, we can see the difference on the left. Totally. Oh, awesome. Okay. I think there was in the chat someone who said 
there are another there's another option right uh, uh for tax wrap so how would i know pretty, which maybe? options are available like how do i learn yeah. this so dev tools like this is even more handy so if you actually click on balance um yep and then i think if you just clear it like hit delete then it'll actually show you all the options oh. natively so this is one one path um and so you, yeah pretty i think is the one that they mentioned maybe okay. yes that i pretty think is, is maybe if it's it's less harsh. It's let it's. It, I think it will prevent things like orphans, which is a word sitting on the bottom by itself, mm -hmm. um, and things like that. So yeah, you could check there. I think another thing to reference is you know that we'll, we'll mention even in Webflow in the designer, you can actually jump to the MDN docs for right. properties, so you could see all the options there as well. Okay, so that is an example. You know, we put on a custom property, went into inspect. You know, we changed it, we kind of see how it looked. Now we're kind of operating under ideal circumstances, right? I have this yeah. very powerful computer. Uh, I'm on the latest version of Chrome. I'm not on Internet Explorer version 10. Uh, I'm not hated by every designer here. Um, is there any kind of thinking of like, can I just apply all of these properties all the time and never worry about the situation of like, can people use them? Yeah, great call out. And like Uncle Ben says, always with great power comes great responsibility. And so, yes, we always want to double check because since this opens up the whole sea of power of CSS, not all CSS properties are supported on every browser. So a great site to check is can I use, is it .com, I think. Uh, I always just end up Googling like text wrap balance browser support. Um, yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, and so you could do text app, uh, sorry, text dash wrap, yep. And then it will show you like, hey, here is the browser support. And I think you can even go further and do specifically to balance because sometimes the different values have different support. Wow. Um, okay. There you go. And so you have to be aware that if you have a client or somebody that you're building for, even in this case, that happens to have users or it's just any user on the web, there's a lot of people that use Safari. And as you can see, Safari there in that top section is not fully supported. The TP, I think, is uh, like something preview. I thought it was developer preview, but um, technical preview, maybe that's what it is. Right. And so, yeah, so that it, it's not always going to be supported. And so this is a great thing to always reference anytime you're unsure. Uh, and then the other thing to keep in mind is like, what's the worst case if somebody opens this up in Safari and it can't load that prop? It's not going to blow up your site. Uh, in this specific use case of text wrap, it would simply just not apply the prop. And so it would format the text like it was without it, right? Which is still fine. Like right. um, it's just maybe not quite as balanced or pretty. <laughs> yeah, so there's two things that you're saying we should consider when using custom properties. The first is that, is it supported, right? Mm -hmm. So that's more almost binary, basically by version. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. no, uh, binary is just a fancy way of saying yes, no. Uh, but mm -hmm. second is, uh, what happens if it's not supported? So in our case, if we go here and then we see this, we right click inspect and we say, okay, well, like what if we turn it off? Not the end of the world, right? It's just gonna take our default text wrapping. So that is something to consider. Okay, now that felt like a good amuse bush, like a, a good starter in terms of custom properties, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there were some folks talking about calc and I saw the word function uh, kind of jumping around in the chat. So uh, uh, in our journey of learning these custom properties or learning how, what would you recommend next as uh, a way to maybe improve my website or explore some of these custom properties? Yeah, I think uh, an the other end of the spectrum that I think about is stuff that's just like straight up more fun and playful. Like tech drop balance is awesome. Don't, let me be clear, it's, but it's, it has a great practical purpose. Something else we could play with to show even especially functions and how you can do different things in values is like cursors okay. uh, is a fun one. So like maybe even your little 3D spline there, like doing a little custom cursor on it could be fun uh, as almost like an Easter egg. Okay. Um, yeah. I think that's cool. How do I, how would you write? Okay. So I would go into custom properties. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write cursor maybe. Yep. Okay. That mm -hmm. is an option. Mm -hmm. But like, what do I put into the value here? How do I? Yeah. yeah. So, so this do is where it gets interesting. Square. Yeah. <laughs> Square. You could try. It'd probably give you an error. Uh, yep. CSS sucks. Um, so I think it pre it briefly briefly showed right there. If you hover over cursor, 
it will actually highlight view in MDN, right? And so I think this is, again, something that I get really amped about as a Webflow nerd and web dev nerd of let's use the same docs and resources that every developer in the world uses inside of a visual development tool. And this is MDN is like the name of the game, standardized aside from maybe W3 docs uh, of what's possible with code, right? And so you can scroll in here. Honestly, it's a lot of content. We don't need to get into all the nitty gritty of it, but this will show things like right in that syntax one that previews the, the option of URL. Um, it says cursor and then URL, and in this case it says hand.cur. It we could do any URL there to an image. And so okay. that could be a fun one to do a completely custom cursor. Okay. Um so yeah. if I'm looking at MDM and I've got all of the properties here on the left, right? So that's probably mm -hmm. similar to what we're pulling in in Webflow itself, right? So mm -hmm. I can kind of search here. And then I've selected cursor. Now cursor mm -hmm. comes in different flavors. Not only does it come in different flavors, but I can input multiple potential values here. So this is giving yeah. me the options and then we have kind of URL and then hand.cur. So walk me through how I should kind of, okay, I don't know this property. Mm -hmm. How do I think about this structure? And maybe we look at the examples. How do you think about this? Yeah, I think the, the first way I break it down is a little like we mentioned where you have the prop or the property on the left of the colon. Right. Uh, and so that is what the thing is we want to adjust. And then the value on the left is like, how do you want to adjust that? Right. right. And so, as you mentioned, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And uh, thinking about like specifically the URL one, just I, I really lean on examples like okay. all the time, you know, Googling what's an example of this and then finding that and replicating it. So, yeah, even let's like copy, copy pasting. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. Into so let's the value. Paste this. So mm -hmm. it's essentially saying we want the cursor to be a URL. We need a mm -hmm. URL right here. And then this, I think, is like the default, right? So it's going to say, OK, if that's not available, right? Mm -hmm. So we look at here, we have URL, X, Y position, and then keyword, which is you know required. And we have to put one of these options. So we're saying exactly put a pointer. But how do I set the URL here? Let's say I want to put, I've got a Webflow image here. I want this little cube. Mm -hmm right here. Yep. Yeah. So URL, as the name implies, if you can open that either in a new tab or there's a tiny little link icon there too, that right will also here, yeah. copy that URL. Okay. Each one will net you the same result. Yeah. And then so you could grab the URL and then replace it with that hand. Okay. Exactly. Let's enter yep. there. So we're saying, you know, use this URL. And if that doesn't work, use this pointer. So mm -hmm. let's preview that. Uh... Damn, it's a, it's black on pink, but we have it. We have our little <laughs> custom cursor. Um, totally. So, what is that URL like? Is is that different from you know just entering a value? How, mm -hmm. You know, what is what is that URL with brackets? Yeah. So it in the value, I would say the URL is a function, right? So we can not only just put direct values like width is 200 pixels as a basic example, but you can also do operations, functions in values of certain props. Mm -hmm. Somebody in chat, you mentioned earlier, mentioned calc is arguably probably one of my favorite things about all of this right. is that now we can do native calc that is just so many use cases. Um, and so URL is just another type of function in the, va in the yeah, value of a prop. Absolutely. Okay. And then we can evaluate it here. Now, there's a question in the chat and there's some demand for some more advanced stuff. And we're going to get to that in a moment. I've really got an Excel <laughs> sheet to show you. So it's going to be exciting. Um, but cursor is supported. So someone mentioned in the chat, like cursor is something that is supported in Webflow. Why would mm -hmm. you use a custom property? And what happens if you use a custom property for something that is already supported? Great, great, great question. So if you scroll down right above where the custom properties uh, feature is, there is indeed already a cursor. It's highlighted blue, and this is already answering that question. So we could have looked at the native cursors, but the URL option is simply not there. Right. And so, so what's so interesting is that with any property in the style panel, if you're using a custom one and there's one already available for that in the UI, it will, it will correlate them, right? It will highlight it blue, determining, hey, this has been set on this selector at this breakpoint. But it'll also show you if you click into that, as you did a moment ago, you can actually see and manipulate the value further in this like expanded text field. Um, and if there is also like some, this little UI dialogue is like 
fairly new in general because some of the other properties will also show another tab instead of custom mm -hmm. it'll show variable right and so this is a whole new way to really yeah get more fine-tuned in some of the properties and make sure again the power here is that you're correlating real just hard direct css values and properties directly to the style panel ui to make it like easier to find for other developers that maybe come into the project later or even for yourself coming back and be like wait where did i set that cursor right um making sure it's all discoverable from multiple places perfect okay so that was uh we've done text wrap balance we've talked about how to use functions right we're evaluating a value in this case it was an image using mm -hmm. uh, uh, a cursor right um, so how, how, where do we go from here? Maybe we mix mm -hmm. both of those together. How do we take text, calculate values? Uh, do you see anything here that we can make this better? Yeah, I, I think another one is the headline. And in general, I know another topic in the community and broader web is just like fluid typography, dynamic typography, a lot of different ways to say it. And so similar to calc or others, we can do that also with type. So we can calculate sizes right. fluidly. And so there's a prop that's really interesting, or it's actually a value uh, function called clamp. Okay. But before we jump that into we can that, set what, on font size. What yeah. is dynamic typography, right? Because mm -hmm. I currently have my text scaling down. Yep. As my, let's imagine, you know, I have, let me check what I have here. I have uh, on desktop, we're at 60. Let me select all H1 headings. Then going down, I'm at 50, then 40, and then 30. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between what I currently have set up in the UI versus fluid typography? Yeah. So right now, at, if you were to like, you know, fluidly move the browser within, you would see that at each breakpoint that font size jumps to the next size. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's how the way web's been for a while. Right. Um, but it's also four different individual props that have been set for each breakpoint to control that. And with something like clamp, you can actually set one uh value at just test top and then set, you know, some some degrees of range for it. And then it will just automatically interpolate the change of font size from one end of the spectrum to the other one end of the browser width to the other Got so it. that you only have to set it in one spot and then it will just like automatically scale down instead of jumping from one break to the point to the next okay yeah so there's this kind of what happens when we go from uh say here and then we mm -hmm. we're jumping so we want that to be fluid right so you're talking about right. clamp do you want to look mm -hmm. at that in mdn or should i should we kind of look at it in webflow first yeah, I think we jump into it in Webflow and even your calculator, I love. <laughs> okay, so what are we actually changing? What is the property mm -hmm. that we're changing across our uh, heading? Yeah, so font size, um, which again, it is a is a property already uh, in Webflow, but by doing it through custom properties down here, now we can add that function, which is clamp. Okay, um, so mm -hmm. I'm adding font size as the property. Yep. Right, let me actually, I have to select it. It's not that you actually mm -hmm. have to click, it's not, you know, Webflow making it hard. Um, I think you can hit return maybe oh, too, but either God. way. <laughs> I don't know if I have the keyboard for that. I don't know if my, yeah. You know, um, and then clamp. So yep. clamp is a function. Mm -hmm. what, how do I learn about clamp? MDM. So yeah, MDM would probably be the, the path to go if you aren't familiar with it yet. So again, okay. you could click from in the designer. You could also search like this, um, even, yeah, there you go, yep. Okay, so let's talk about it. So, okay, they use the example. So what am I looking at parameters? Let's talk there, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So min, yep. val, max. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it explains it better than I could, honestly, but hopefully it's even obvious, especially in the min and max. So like, what is the minimum font size that you want to allow? What is the maximum font size that you want to allow? And then the val, being you know a way that it can calculate the difference when it goes from min to max okay right so my max would be this right let's let's make this a little more visible let's put i'm on let's go into desktop here right mm -hmm. i've got my heading let's put 60 mm -hmm. and then my min would be 30. so if yep. i understand you correctly i'm going to go back i think i have to add it again i'm on desktop i'm going into font size and then i'm doing clamp Right, and I think I said 60. No, it's min first. Yep. Is it min first? 
I think it's max first, right? No, it's min uh, first. No, you're right. It's min first. Okay. So I'm saying I want 30, I think I said. Yep. 60. CX. And then max is 60. Mm -hmm. And what do, how do I decide between the two? Yeah. So the, the examples on MDM show using VW, which is viewport width as a value, uh, maybe even percentage, but you know, we could go with VW as the example. So it, you know, that is a fluid value or unit, right? Cause it's based on a multiple of the viewport width. Got it. Um, so yeah, this is where you can calculate it some ways, like, you know, in a sheet, you could also play with this. You could put in a, a rough number that you think like five VW or something like that and see how it reacts in Webflow visually and then adjust it as needed. Okay, so 30 view width means take the width of the current browser in pixels, mm -hmm. take 30%, mm -hmm. you know, and then that mm -hmm. is how you calculate. So I have two other properties, right? So I here on, I have 50 and then 40. How do I calculate, mm -hmm. what is based on my viewport? I want something that looks at 40 on the top and then 30 at the bottom. This is where we could use math. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to open up that sheet that we jammed on, yeah. uh, I think this is just like a, such a fun example of, yeah, the nitty gritty on things. And again, you could like, you wouldn't necessarily have to do this. You could just like put in a value, play with right. it in Webflow until it feels right. But I think this is a really great way to get exactly what you want. So as it's showing here, right, you have columns for minimum breakpoint and maximum breakpoint, meaning like if, if you was going to be desktop first uh, or apply from desktop down mm -hmm. or the other way, uh, mobile up, mobile first, um, and then put in your font size desired at each breakpoint. Yep. So okay, 60, yeah. 40, 30. So fun fact, I used to spend my whole day in spreadsheets. I think my you can tell by my design skills. So this is, <laughs> so we're saying these are our breakpoints. These are the Webflow breakpoints. We have the yep. option of calculating based on the max, which is kind of the default that Webflow, right? You, you, you set at 991, which is tablet, mm -hmm. and then set it to 50, so on and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're essentially here calculating what is the percentage, right? So this divided by uh, the max. So I'm gonna do mm -hmm. this divided by here. I actually deleted this, so I'm, I'm rebuilding it live. Here we go. And then yeah. this same thing here, this is always going to be this divided by, I will update the sheet and share it if folks are interested as a clonable, right? And then we have the average, we want to do times a hundred, mm -hmm. right? To get into a, let's do times a hundred here. All right. And then essentially this is saying you should set 5.5 .5 viewport width units, mm -hmm. right? As mm -hmm. the calculation. So this is kind of your, uh, 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 um, your calculation in the middle. So let's go back here. Yep. Let's put all that. Does that make sense? Let me know if folks yeah. have questions in the chat. Now's a good time to go fill out the form to make sure your names are in the credits. And if folks have questions, drop them in the chat. We do have some time for Q&A and I have some stuff we want to show you. Uh, so where were we? We said custom properties, Yep. font size, mm -hmm. clamp, clamp. Uh, and then min, min value. value. Yep. And you need pixel in there too, I think. Oh. So PX. <laughs> Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in for everyone. Okay, yeah. We're saying 30 pixels is our min. Then we're yep. calculating. I said 5.5 5 VW width. Mm -hmm. And then max is 60 pixels. That's it. All right. Let's set that. Now, and then we see it here. Mm -hmm. If I go over to tablet, we, get, we need to reset this because it is yeah. applying that more precise styling. Yep. This is the beauty of it is you can set it on desktop only and you don't have to worry about the other breakpoints. It will automatically deal with that translation between it. So now if you yeah, stretch your browser, you can see it's minimum. And then all of a sudden now it's yeah. fluidly changing and growing in size all the way up to desktop until it hits 60 pixel max, max. Right. So it's worth know, noting. We're, Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's worth noting too that we use pixel for the sake of simplicity in this case, but you can set this as rem mm -hmm. to ensure it's even more accessible, right? And so again, this is where referencing docs like an MDN and even just like there will be properties like this that I think once you give them a try in a project, they can become the mainstay, right? Like now right. I can use this everything going forward and work that much more powerfully and efficiently. Yeah. So what I love to do 
personally is going, you can go into computed and in font size and kind of mm. see it update in real time. Oh, right, so, so we cool. can see that kind of, uh, uh, that font size. And when we hit 60, it stops, right? And then when we hit 30, it stops. So that is that fluid side of it. And I think it's a really cool mm -hmm. example of taking two things, uh, um, that, uh, the properties itself, font size, you know, one of the most popular, and then clamp, which is a function you can use in any CSS property and putting them together. Uh, the, I think the other one was a Vlad did a circle in text wrap, mm. uh, text shape. Uh, which was really, really cool. So uh, awesome. If any folks have questions, now's a good time. We do have some questions in the chat. Someone hates math. So Catherine hates <laughs> math, but got it. So that's awesome. So that means our, our, our job here is done. Um, so drop some questions in the chat. Now's a good time to fill out the form. Uh, while you're dropping questions in the chat, we're going to get to them in a moment. I wanted to highlight, Corey, maybe you want to talk about these, some of the examples from the community. So we just showed three, wanted to you know keep this relatively simple and quick but really appreciate everyone sharing such cool examples, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share them, I'm gonna talk about them, and then Corey, you tell me what you think. So we got Aaron Grieve talking about drop shadows on images using custom properties, using the filter drop shadow. Yeah, so rad. I, I just have to say it broad here, like this is again, the exciting part about this is our community is just like mind bending how vibrant and excited and creative they are, and so like, this is just the tip of the iceberg of all the use cases that can come out and then again, be really practically applicable to our client projects, things we're actually like selling and building for, for other businesses, right? Okay, so uh, there's some questions about what we just did. So I'm gonna show you one more property and then I'm gonna answer the questions. Uh, so FlowScript, uh, this is Edmund, if I'm not mistaken, uh, shared a, on, from FlowScript, I'm gonna drop this in the chat, a bunch of examples. Right, so mm -hmm. these will be in the chat and in the description of this video. Uh, any of any of these kind of catch your eye, Corey, as something that? Oh, this one right here, the little that one. Is oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, so easy. One prop for Star Wars text, no big deal. Uh, yeah, I think some like there, there was some with SVGs and like setting clip path. There was also like even the image flip one. I think was really interesting. Um, yeah, right here, think... custom list types. I think mm -hmm. there was yeah, one more yeah. around uh, flipping a logo left, right, right here. That's scaling. Yeah. That's really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. So let me get back to a few questions. There was someone said, are we putting this on the body or on the text element? So let's go back here. This is a question uh, from uh, Iluya right here mm -hmm. asking, where do we put this property? So uh, do you want to answer this one? Yeah, you could. Um, you could put it on the body. You know, I think there's some people that subscribe to that approach of like, I want all text and all things to be fluid. The caution I would place is accessibility, right? Like in this example, we're doing it on H1, which is big type. And so when I say accessibility, I mean like a, a really important part of accessibility is that some people with vision differences might want their default font size in the browser to be larger. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'd never want to intentionally restrict that. Um, but if you're doing something like this on some type that's already very large, like an H1 or, you know, some big display type, it's less likely that that's going to cause harm because it's already so large. And the vast majority of use cases is people want the font bigger for making it easier to let, uh, easier to read. And so what can happen if you do it on the body is then like your base font size in the body can get too small. Again, not necessarily, you could put that minimum parameter of like one RAM or 60 mm -hmm. pixels to make sure that it can't get too small. So Absolutely. again, this is, yeah, this is what's exciting is it's up to you as the creator on in what extent you wanna use it. Okay, there are two questions in the chat that I'm gonna address. There's a question around background image. Uh, mm. There is no timeline for that specific CSS property to be included in the dropdown, but uh, you can use that as any other custom code, right? So that functionality is still there that ability mm -hmm. to set it as a style. Mm -hmm. So that is still there. It is just not in the dropdown, uh, I think for legacy code reasons. So the team is aware and knows that people mm -hmm. wanna build it. Uh, so uh, appreciate all the notes in the chat. Second question really quickly is, do we have a link to the spreadsheet? I will include it. I did not know this spreadsheet would be so popular. So I am more than happy <laughs> to clean it up a little bit and I'll drop it. And if you ever need uh, specific spreadsheets built, uh, Corey and I are, are always more than happy uh, to build some. Uh, okay, keep dropping yeah. your questions. Let me know if I missed some. Uh, I want to do go back. We had one more example 
that I wanted to show uh, from uh, Riziki, which is really cool. It is a mm. linear, using a mask as a linear gradient to kind of highlight a slider. So I think, or I, I don't know if this is a slider, but uh, at least a kind of logo, uh, this right here, right? Yeah, I think the feathered really, really edge. Cool. Uh, in Riziki. Yeah. I, I love everything Riziki's been putting out. So many great examples. And even this one as an example, why it's so powerful is that like before you'd have to do like an overlay with like a gradient to white, but then what if the background color changes? Then now you have to change the gradient. Like, and this is solving all of that in one prop. Like it's incredible when you think about it in that lens of like the amount of time saving and the amount of efficiency that can be gained just by leveraging these pops. Again, it's going to take some time to discover them, learn them, try them, but like such a such an awesome one. Absolutely. So question from One Life Gaming, can we use variable values in custom properties? Uh, this is not a plant. We were hoping someone would ask this question. Uh, so thank you uh, uh, for making our dreams come true. Uh, Corey, uh, can we use variables in uh, uh, custom properties? Yes, we can. And all, again, the more power of yeah. variables. So the, if anybody's not familiar, a context, yes, jump in there to point out is that you can create variables in Webflow, which are CSS variables under the hood. And when you create one, um, and then click on the little gear um, that is on hover of the title itself. So on the right side, yeah, that little gear, then it'll show you here is the actual CSS variable name that you can now copy by clicking on it and paste that into a prop um, so that it's fully dynamic um, in both realms. So I'm gonna put it right here. So what I'm doing is I had my property as static. So I'm just putting the variable that I'm calling large in the property itself, right? So now if I change large, that's gonna change the upper limit of my clamp. Uh, so uh, you can use variables as you would uh, right there. Uh, uh, so yes, thank you, uh, One Life Gaming, for that question. Really appreciate it. So now we change the variable and we will change our font size. Uh, so Absolutely. one last moment to make sure your name is still in the chat. Uh, uh, Corey, that was so much information. So uh, any kind of parting words, if you will, anything where people go from here, uh, where th should they go next? Uh, what spreadsheets should we build? Where do we go from here? Yeah. <laughs> I think two things come to mind. One is again, embrace the learning of it, embrace the like all the power that can come with this, but from a mindset that like you can always do it one at a time, right? Like even myself, I'm not using these on every single selector in every single project. It's a lot of like, oh, this might be handy here, like calc on, you know, setting a width or something like that. And slowly you'll form that habit. And the other side I would I just that came to mind in, in the variable call out that I wanted to just shout out the announcement was it last week of the Figma to Webflow plugin mm -hmm. update where we can now sync variables from Figma in real time into Webflow. And so when you put that stream of thinking together, Figma variable, variables in Webflow, variables now in a custom property, we're literally going from Figma value to code in one continuous stream and just publish with a click. And so I think the point is that all of these combinations of things like variables, custom properties, custom element, these in combination are just like exponential opportunity uh, of different ways we can use Webflow that we've never been able to before. And so again, I think it's just something to keep in mind as you're building your next project, it doesn't need to be a drastic change, but remember that there's always new ways to maybe test out one of those new features and ask questions, look in the community, see what other people are doing and how they're using it. And it's, yeah, only up from there. Absolutely. And we're going to end it on saying Derek is right. The future is now and the future is <laughs> uh, building uh, a full-blown websites uh, using native uh, styling and custom element and just, just more power. So Corey, uh, real honor. Thank you so, so much for joining. And I'm sure you will be back soon enough showing us more superpowers. So thank you so much for joining. Indeed. Thanks for having me, y'all. All right. Let's go to our little, uh, uh, who, do we, who do we have here today? So uh, thank you so, so much to so many of you who have joined. Oh, the names are too small. I got I to gotta, I gotta bring this up. Where did I put this?
Oh no. I can't read the names. They're too small. Here we go. Okay. We got Mariam, Dua, Glenn, Derek, John, uh, uh, Bolaji, Sudesh, Scott, Nancy, or Automation Ace, John again, Penny. Thank you so, so much for joining Aaron, our digital Dreamweaver. I will be back in two weeks and we have a very special surprise for you next week. So thank you so, so much for joining. And I will see you back here in two weeks and on our special show next week. And with that, bye everyone. Whew. That was a good one. Josh, how did you feel about that stream? Aaron, that was awesome. Mind blowing. Um, yeah, I can't wait to uh, join the Webflow team next week. I mean, it's such an honor. And uh, I mean, the crazy st studio production you guys put together, it's going to bring live streams to a whole new level. I mean, I have all these ideas for the community, starting with like design breakdowns, some challenges. And dude, the speed build, don't get me started. Yeah, oh. it's going to be awesome. Hey, I can't Aaron. wait. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I think we're still streaming. Uh, I well, hope. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's I my hope bad. Nobody's right. watching right now. Uh